Welcome to Teacher Truths, presented by the Smithsonian Early Enrichment Center, SEEK. Each episode of Teacher Truths takes place between two SEEK faculty members and explores a topic related to education. Have a topic you'd like to hear about? Email S-E-E-C social media at si.edu. This is Silvana. I teach kindergarten. Hi, this is Erica. I teach one to two year olds. So I'm, what I'm really wondering is why is early childhood education important to you, Erica? There's a lot of reasons that I think early childhood education is important to me. Um, one really important aspect I think of early childhood is just the empathy level and like social emotional skills that you develop in this time frame. Um, for me, like my students are nonverbal. And it's really important that we mirror how things look and how feelings are so that they know the words to use when they're feeling a certain way. So what are some ways that you demonstrate or model that for your, for your students? There's several. I think a really big one that happens a lot in the two-kid <laughs> room is if a friend gets hurt, we always make sure that we go check on their body with a gentle touch. Mm-hmm. Gentle touches are important. <laughs> um, and just like narrating how they might be feeling in that moment. And I narrate even like how I'm feeling. Like I explain how it's affecting me too. And like I can get frustrated when they're frustrated or I can get upset when they're upset. But definitely narrating and explaining it through. That makes a lot of sense. In my classroom, I know that when I'm helping a friend work through their emotions, they are better able to see when other people are feeling equal emotions or similar emotions they're better able to understand that, oh, that friend needs space. I hear that situation going on, and the narration definitely helps with that. Yeah, and I think it's important to note that we use words like that, too, in our room. We use space. We don't use a full sentence that says, I need space right now, but even just grasping the word space, like, means, oh, they need space. Like, let's give them some room. They're working through their emotions. (laughs) And when they get older, they're able to take that, like, they need space, they're working through something, and a- able to maybe show empathy in a way of, like, oh, this friend is upset, let me take them their stuffy. This friend is upset, let me go give them a hug when, they- when they've had enough space, or maybe there's something I can do to make them feel better. Um, but, yeah, definitely having those building blocks that you guys do in, in the toddler rooms is helpful when they come to kindergarten, because they have a better sense of other people's feelings yeah I agree I mean it just kind of lays a foundation for the rest of their lives Mm -hmm. like I know we've spoken recently about how we view this our job and our profession and education in general and Mm -hmm. there's so much power within this age group that they just have this free range to play and they get to express how they feel and they get to see how their friends feel and I just think it's really important so what are some ways you think that these building these um, social emotional skills like such as empathy and understanding where other people are coming from and perspective taking how do you think this is influential for them in their adult lives or when they're older I know I'll speak to my own like truths like I think that I can be a pretty compassionate person Mm -hmm. and I think that's because I started so young like I had an educator Mm -hmm. as a family member all my family members are educators (laughs) actually they just kind of we're there like they kind of teach you how to feel things and that it's okay to feel these Mm -hmm. things and it's okay to be mad and it's okay to be sad but that one moment of being sad or mad does not have to define your entire day yeah and I think that's important especially for um us in the kindergarten room is that we say it's okay to be upset right now but it's not okay to do whatever action it is that is hurting someone else's feelings or and I think that really helps them to understand their feelings are their feelings it's not a representation of themselves because you can experience so many different feelings even all at once yeah and so I I I really like that they're able to really kind of understand themselves and their own feelings and that's the really what I think is the building blocks for understanding other people's feelings I completely agree and it's beneficial too that you can acknowledge your own feelings and then Mm -hmm. acknowledge someone else's feelings for the rest of your life like Mm -hmm. And there's so much, like, malleability that this time and this age that 
as you get older, like, it only gets better. Like, you only become more compassionate and more passionate and more understanding. Like, that doesn't just, like, kind of, especially if it's just, like, rooted early. And especially when they're nonverbal, like, before Mm -hmm. they even have the words, it's give them the The compassion is there. Give them the tools to learn how to do it because if they don't know the word, then they're never going to know how to do it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Can you think of a moment where you witness a child showing empathy in your classroom? Yeah, you know, in my classroom, it it really always catches you by surprise that they suddenly kind of grasp this concept Mm -hmm. and they go check on a friend without you saying anything, you know, like even just this morning, someone had a hard time at drop off and another friend went to go bring them this toy thing of grapes. I didn't even want it. And it was just a moment of like, oh, they get it. Like they can see this person's having mm-hmm. a hard time. Yeah. And grapes made me feel good. So I'm going to give you these <laughs> fake grapes to feel good. And it is just like a, a humbling moment and like a very proud teacher moment that I repeat myself 45 times a day <laughs> to the same student and developmentally appropriately. And, um, just to see it is literally like it stills me every time I'm just like oh they did it they got it but yeah I think that too that's important at that age and sometimes you'll when you're working with older kids you'll notice that they just it's either a part of their um just a part of their personality or sometimes it is some it is something that you taught like kind of in a routine sense but on the first day of our classroom In kindergarten, we had a friend that was very sad about being dropped off. And there was another student who recognized that she was feeling sad and in circle time put her arm around her. And it was literally the sweetest, most empathetic move that someone could make towards a stranger. And just at a very basic level, it really warmed my heart and made me feel so happy to see that before having even taught anything related any routines like check on a friend's body or ask that friend are you okay it was just like at that at that child's core just really part of her like she knew yeah she, she knew was like I know you're sad and this makes me feel better so I'm gonna reach over and hug you and it was really it was sweet yeah I could imagine that 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 would be one of those moments <laughs> where I just would completely freeze and I'd be like oh my god they get it like this is amazing <laughs> the collective sigh like oh <laughs> like just a meme of everyone like yes <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Erica. Thanks for having me. You know, I could uh, talk about education for a month straight. <laughs> <laughs>